um, organizationally, mm -hmm. um, what weaknesses or challenges have you had or things you haven't managed well that if someone else was in Timbuktu starting something similar, yeah. you'd be like, okay, I, we made this mistake. So what are some of the weaknesses you guys have had? <laughs> um, so one of the big ones is an online management platform. So when we opened Catapult, we are like, we could get 20 members this first year, that would be great. And mm -hmm. within a couple of months, we had 80, 85, 90. Yeah. And so it grew very quickly, and we were not prepared for that. And mm -hmm. so um, an online management platform, and there's some really good ones that I've learned about since then, and we're in the exploratory stage. Right now, we use a little program called Google Docs and Excel. <laughs> yeah, that's what I use. <laughs> <laughs> and so once you get up into those numbers of 100, you know, it's it gets a little more tough to, you know, managing the calendar of who's using the, uh, the different conference rooms oh, and yeah. payments and, um, you know, their access card and their ID number and all that, you know, all that stuff that we have to keep track of um, and knowing, you know, who's active and who's a past member and just having one system that kind of does all of that for us. So mm -hmm. that's been a big one that we've had a lot of challenges with. Um, our mentor program is something that, you know, you mentioned you've taken advantage of, but you know, we're always striving to make things better. Yeah. And so we just, we love feedback. Constantly getting feedback is a huge one. So getting that feedback and realizing the first time you do something, mm -hmm. it's probably not going to be the best. <laughs> it's 99% of the time not going to be the best. So just being okay with like, hey, this is working, this is not working. Mm -hmm. And we kind of use the motto of, you know, fail early and often to succeed sooner. Mm -hmm. So instead of, you know, hey, we're going to plan this workshop and we're going to take three months to plan it and then we're going to do it oh my gosh, best workshop ever, or holy crap, that sucked, and mm -hmm. you know, no one liked it, and we just wasted four months of our time doing it, well, why don't we just like, hey, let's do a, a little small one next week and see how it goes, or let's mm. you know, do a quick feedback, and let's just brainstorm with our entrepreneurs, and so instead of doing these long, long, long planning, like, what are some little short steps that you can do, you know, that really help you kind of decide, okay, this is going well, this is good, but you know, you're not spinning, spinning your wheels, because a lot of nonprofits, you know, you don't have a lot of staff, we have just mm. two here. And so using your yeah. time really wisely. Um, Interesting. So uh, so on the first thing you mentioned, the online management, yeah. like doing it over, would you have started with that? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, so really? I think so. Um, What's the investment course, on that? Hindsight. Uh, so there's a lot of different ones. There's everything from Salesforce to one that we're looking at now called Nexodus, mm -hmm. from a couple hundred dollars a month to almost a thousand. Yeah. And so budgeting that I think is really important. We didn't budget it the first year. We do have it budgeted for this year, even though we haven't implemented it yet. Mm -hmm. And so just finding one that really works for you, I think, is important. Everybody's space is a little different. Everybody's goals are a little different. Your layout of your space is different. Um, you know, your calendar systems are different. So really, just finding the system that works best for you and doing the 30-day trials. It's annoying and it takes time, mm -hmm. but it's really worth it. And making oh, sure with all the Platforms. Yes. Okay. Um, Let me ask you this. Free thirty days. So. Um, again, thinking about Kate Lake's example, my brothers worked with uh, a, an actual incubator mm -hmm. um, in Portland. Um, what assets do you think one needs mm -hmm. to launch a venture like this? Like, mm -hmm. like I know your budget, but they don't <laughs> um, because you've done these presentations before. Yeah. Um, so share with them a little bit of what your starting budget because there does have to be a dose of realism. Oh, yeah. There's someone graduating Southeastern going, I'm going to do this, but they have no idea of the grasp of resources mm -hmm. it took to start. So yeah. just the broad strokes, what were some of the early resources you guys had in your camp to really get this off the ground like you did? Yeah, that's a really great question. One, I meet with people a lot about, about the space and starting their own spaces. Mm -hmm. So I can't speak for other spaces, but I can speak for ours and, and kind of what I've learned. Mm -hmm. um, the LEDC was... The catalyst. They were the reason this got started. Their leadership, their team, the relationships that Steve has built over the past 30 years mm -hmm. was really the reason mm -hmm. in his research. And so it was really him and his team, um, their high skill, high wage team, his board, um, that really came together and, and sought out best practices and how they could really make this work. So yeah, the LEDC and their mm -hmm. team just coming together and really um, and putting their money and yeah. their time and their expertise. And so it's hard even to put a price or a price tag on, you know, we're at a, about a million dollar project for the three years, including yeah. building out the space and everything else, including all those in-kind donations, but the time people took to say, hey, you know, our architect, of, hey, you should put stairs through this, down through this atrium. Mm. Um, you know, we previously just had the entrance through the elevator. So, like, people taking the time to draw out those plans mm. um, and really being invested in the community. And so these are people who are really passionate about recruitment and retention of young talent. Mm -hmm. They're really passionate about that healthy community, the quality of life. You know, they know that um, if they're a high-skill employee or 
um, you know, one of those big companies that they're going to be hiring people. Mm -hmm. And those people that they hire are going to want really cool things to do. They're going to want to eat beignets and they're going to want a really cool photographer <laughs> and a really cool lifestyle company because uh -huh. that's quality of life. Mm -hmm. And they also know that entrepreneurs are coming up with new solutions and creative solutions every day. Interesting. And so it was really, um, it was really obviously IDEO helping us kind of change yeah. the way that we think and the community really just coming alongside and saying, hey, Lakeland needs this. Yeah. Uh, we need to be supporting these entrepreneurs, these under the radar groups that aren't, you know, aren't getting the support that they need. And so I would just have to give all the credit to obviously the LEDC, but the community yeah. who's just rallied and given and given yeah. and given. Um, now, and so that, I think that's a really special thing that we have. Um, was there, uh, and maybe this was you, I don't know, was there a champion for this particular project that just like had to push it over the hill or was the entire group from LEDC like, no, we're in it, it makes sense, let's just all go do this? Yeah, um, so, you know, in a group where there's 136 members, there's obviously a yeah. lot of different people and different types of people, mm -hmm. but um, one common thing that they all have is recruiting and retaining talent. Oh. And so, you know, you know, if Tampa pays more, Orlando pays more, or, you know, they just, th those people see that as like, oh, I'd rather live near the coast or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there, and there's lots of ways that we're doing that through different programs that we have, Y Lakeland and um, and through Summer Leadership Program. But um, Steve, I mean, Steve's the champion. He's, oh yeah. He's the one that just had the vision and mm. just you know projects are hard to yeah. to push through. So he just really you know pushed it the whole time until wow. it was done. And so we had we had entrepreneurs sitting in here before the stairs were even in, and the stairs are being. Their metal stairs being hit in, and you say, "Hey, just come on, let's do it." Oh wow! Come in. And so let everybody just come in for free for a couple months while we, you know, finished out building the space. And wow! So, um, he's the one that so that should get the credit for sure. So the things I heard, and I want you guys to hear this in a big way because I think that you never want. To